mighty in their lives as well. We ask, Lord God, that as we open your word, may you speak to us again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A grateful community. I have an announcement to make before I jump into this. This is going to be my last sermon of the year. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I can't believe it was last Sunday. All right. <laughs> I know. That's why I had to jump in really quick. I was already seeing some worried faces there. <laughs> Gratitude is something that we have to learn, and we have to learn it daily. And we have to remind ourselves to be grateful and Sometimes we don't want to be reminded, but we have to, even though we don't like it. I don't think anyone is just born naturally grateful, right, with a full heart of gratitude. As those who have had the joy of parenting, you know how many times you've had to tell your children, right, to say thank you, right? Or even when they say no, right, no thank you, right? And you've probably sat down with them many times trying to explain what gratitude means, that you don't deserve everything in this world, right? That even with one toy is enough, right? And you should be grateful even for that one toy. And so there's a lot of teaching that goes on, and it just doesn't stop, right? And I think I've come to the point where my kid understands gratitude because when I give him a timeout, he says, Daddy, I am so grateful for the way you discipline me and you correct me and lead me in the path of righteousness. It's what I wish my son would say, right? But he is not grateful, right, when I discipline him. Hopefully later on in life, he will look back and say, Daddy, thank you for disciplining me. But in that moment, no, they're not grateful. But when they ask for something and they receive it, we often teach them to say thank you. Gratitude is this practice of being aware of the good that you have received or the good that has been done to you. And we make an effort to express that feeling, that interaction. We can also learn the many benefits of being grateful. People have written hundreds of books about what gratitude does to you. Benefits that range from a good self-esteem and mental health to social connection, a better social connection because it increases your empathy. It also reduces your aggression, right? You're more open uh, to peaceful dialogue because you're so grateful. You're, you complain less. I mean, just if you just have to grab any book and they will tell you the many, many benefits of living a grateful life. And the Bible, though, is always going to take it to the next level, right? Whatever the world tells you, hey, this is what's good for you. And the Bible says, well, this is why it's even better for you if you live by it. Because like love, love is more than just a feeling, right? The Bible is going to take it to the next level and say love is an action. Love is a commitment. Love is something that we demonstrate daily, and so it doesn't just stay with the aspect of feeling or acknowledgement, but it also moves towards action. It calls for action. So first, this action of gratitude that the Bible calls us to is to realign our feelings and our acknowledgement so that we are placing it on the giver and not the gifts. Because oftentimes we're grateful for what we receive, right? Right? But the Bible says, no, 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 you have to take that action and realign it because you have to be grateful for who? For the giver who gives you the gifts. So at the end of the day, I'm ultimately more grateful for God in my life than the many things I may have received from God. Because that won't change. Because such focus rests on God I believe we, like Paul, can say in Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 and 13. He says, I'm not saying this because I need anything, for I have learned how to be content in any circumstance. I know the experience of being in need and having more than enough. 
I have learned the secret to being content in any and every circumstance, whether full or hungry, or whether having plenty or being poor. I can endure all these things through the power of the one who gives me strength. The focus is on the one who gives me strength, not on the things that I have or not on the things that have been taken away from me. It's not an option. Such gratitude or contentment, right, rests on the person. It's not an option if we're following Christ. It's actually a life-giving practice that sustains us in our journey and in our walk with Christ. Our gratitude should always be visible. Is the next thing that Paul is going to try and tell his people in Colossians, especially as a believing community, right? Your gratitude should be visible to others. Paul will tell the Colossians, right, that gratitude is not just about a disposition of the heart, but an invitation as well to be the ones who give thanks. And let me explain what that means, to not just be about the disposition of the heart, but also an invitation to be the one that gives thanks. In other words, be the ones who extend gratitude. In other words, be the ones who extend favor. In other words, be the one who extends grace towards others. In today's term, we say paying it forward, right? But God tells us gratitude is more than just this feeling or this acknowledgement or this disposition of the heart. It's an action that calls us to pay it forward. So if you received peace from God, pay it forward. If you received love from God, pay it forward. If you received mercy from God, pay it forward. If you received compassion from God, pay it forward. If you received blessings from God, pay it forward is the meaning of gratitude that Paul is trying to teach to his people. So you read in Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, it says, The peace of Christ must control your hearts, a peace into which you were called in one body, and be thankful people. The word of Christ must live in you rich, richly. Teach and warn each other with all wisdom by singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God the Father through him. An invitation to extend, to pay it forward. And the more we experience God's goodness in our lives, I think the more we can extend that gratitude, that grace, that favor towards others. And you might think, oh, well, I think you just need some transcendent and some mystic experience of God's goodness for you to truly be convinced of what you've received. But no, really, it just comes down to the practical things that Paul is mentioning here. It comes down to being intentional in belonging to a healthy community of believers where there is just teaching, singing of psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, encouragement, and prayer. If you belong in such community, you will see God's goodness, no doubt. And when you begin to see God's goodness, you will want to pay it forward. You will express that gratitude. So there's two groups. There's, here on my left, you can imagine there's group A, right? And here on my right, there's group B. So group A, imagine you're sitting in group A where all they do is complain and grumble about all the things that they don't have, all the things that they don't like, and all the things they deserve, and all the things that they are entitled to. I think it would be a form of torture, right, <laughs> to sit in that group. But that's all they do is just, hey, man, I don't like this. I should have gotten this. I didn't get this. I, you know, it's just on and on and on. Oh, but they pray, you say. They pray at the end. Oh, sure, you can pray, but you can pray even without thanksgiving, you know. You can pray in a demanding and entitled way to God as well. You can pray in a self-righteous manner as well. Or you can say, God, you know what? I've been so good. I've done so many good things. Why haven't I gotten this yet? Or why haven't you done this yet? 
Or why have you taken this from me? Or why do I get more than that? Or why do I get less than that guy? I should be getting more than that person. It's another dangerous slippery slope if you go into comparisons with others. And any time you do, it doesn't end well. I think that's why Paul reminds his readers later on that even in prayer, we ought to guard our hearts with thanksgiving. Colossians 4.2 says it, right? It says, keep on praying and guard your prayers with what? With thanksgiving. Guard your prayers with thanksgiving because it can quickly go the wrong way. And Jesus demonstrated even the, this even in a parable. In Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14, he tells of this parable. It says, Jesus told this parable to certain people who had convinced themselves that they were righteous and who looked on everyone else with disgust. Two people went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed about himself with these words, God, I thank you. Here's them expressing gratitude, right? I thank you that I'm not like everyone else. And that's where it just goes downhill. <laughs> Crooks, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of everything I receive. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He wouldn't even lift his eyes to look toward heaven. Rather, he struck his chest and said, God, Show mercy to me, a sinner. I tell you, this person went down to his home justified rather than the Pharisee. Group A. Well, here's group B. And imagine sitting in group B where they are constantly sharing how God has blessed them, how God has been good to them, how God has been faithful to them. How God has used them to bless others, to extend grace towards others. A group where they begin to open God's word and are reminded that, wow, there's actually even more to be grateful for. Which leads them to sing about it, which leads them to praise. And they continue to extend that favor towards one another as they lift each other in prayer. So the question is obvious, right? Which group do you want to belong to, group A or group B? I hope most of you say group B. Each one of you here today has the capacity and the choice to make the group that you are in today, whether it's at your home or whether it's at your workplace or whether it's here or whether you're visiting, right? Each one of you has a capacity and the choice to make that group look more like group A or look more like group B. It's your choice. Healthy biblical communities are built with hard work. They don't just pop up out of nowhere, right? It takes a lot of work. We all have a say that shapes our own community. We have a choice as to what we bring to the table of fellowship. Every time we gather together, whether it's two people praying, whether it's three people praying, whether it's a small group or whether it's a large group, right? Every time we gather, we gather in table fellowship, right? It's like we sit down in this table and we eat all the good food that God has for us, right? It's a figurative speech, right? We sit at the table to enjoy God's goodness. And here's the thing. When you sit down at the table, you can put gossip on the table. And some people might enjoy it. No, <laughs> oh, this tastes good. But most won't touch it and say, no, thank you. We don't like that. Right? Some people won't bring anything. And I'd rather have people that don't bring anything and sit to the table than actually bring and sit and put gossip on the table. But God says, Every time you come together in fellowship, make sure that what you bring to the table of fellowship, out of the many things that you can bring, bring gratitude. Bring gratitude. And trust me, everyone will enjoy it. They will actually ask for seconds because it will run out. And they can't wait for you to come and sit down on that table again 
because they can't wait to receive more of what you bring to this table of fellowship. I am deeply grateful for God, for each and every one of you here today. As hard and challenging as these past two years or past year may have been in many ways, you faithfully brought gratitude to this table of fellowship. You faithfully continued to extend favor. You faithfully continued to extend grace and kindness in so many ways that even makes me want to come and sit at the table with you again and again and again. And more importantly, you did it in Jesus' name and for God's glory. And I pray that as we enter in 2022, that we continue hard in building this grateful community. That we each make this intentional choice. That as we look in our pockets, if we, as we look in our hearts, as we look in our minds to see what can I bring to this table of fellowship today, that you always remember to bring gratitude. It's something that everyone at the table will always, always enjoy. And that's something that I ask for us to continue to work on, aligning our gratitude on the giver rather than the gifts, allowing our gratitude also to be an extension of God's grace and favor towards others, to be the people that pay forward for what we have received so graciously from God. And I have confidence that we can do this. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, as we look back to another year that comes to an end, we don't look at it with regret, but we want to look at it in a positive way and say, Father, we have received more than enough. And even though we may not have had plenty or even if we had experienced poverty, it doesn't change anything, Father, because our gratitude is not on what we possess or not possess, but on the Creator who can create out of nothing, who can create joy in the midst of grief, who can create peace in the midst of a storm, who can create love in the midst of unforgiveness, who can create unity in the midst of division. Father, because we have such creator in our midst, there's nothing that you cannot provide. And Father, we come here, as we sang earlier, sometimes with broken songs. But you receive it because you know how to make it complete know how to make it beautiful you know how to make it whole so father as we bring our hearts to you this morning and, we, and as we look out the horizon sometimes father it seems hard to even look up and see what 2022 will bring so father give us again the strength to look up to see the horizon, to not be afraid to dream, to not be afraid to expect great things from you because we've seen your goodness and your faithfulness this year and we know it will continue. We pray for your favor. We pray for your grace. And as we are people who receive, may we be also people who pay forward, a grateful community. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.